Welcome to Ditch Outdoor Ministry. Bam! Bam! What's up, man? That's a, that's a four or five right there. That's a beauty, man. You will take that, bugger. We're a preaching, hunting, and fishing YouTube channel. As a beautiful, for this time of year, that is a killer smallmouth. Thanks for stopping by. Now let's get right into the video. Well, I'm heading out. Uh, we're coming out of uh, four days of high, high winds. We had hailstorms. We had a ton of rain. Um, I don't believe that anybody's really been on the water in four days. I mean, it was rocking, man. We're talking 20 mile an hour winds for four days straight. All coming from the same direction, too. So just rocking. Um, today's the first day that we can even get on here. You know what I mean? And it seems to be a beautiful day, but I don't know how the fish are going to react, you know. Um, you know, it's just an absolute pristine day, you know. And I never feel more alive than when I get out on the water or in the woods or whatever, you know. So I. You know, if you're somebody who's sitting in an office all day or you, or you end up trapping yourself in the house because you think that there's just so much that has to be done or I can't be far from my phone. Boy, I got to make sure that I'm always checking that bank account. You know, nothing makes me feel more alive than making a deposit into the bank account. I mean, I feel sorry for you, man. Uh, th this is where it's at. You, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how to say it other than you're missing out. You're missing out on life. You know, once I got out on the water, it was a little choppy. I don't know how much the water was able to calm down after them four days of heavy rocking. Majesty, worship is majesty. Unto Jesus be our glory. My primary way of fishing is sun fishing. So I need the sun to be up in the sky. When I come out early in the morning, it, the sun is at an angle where I can't see into the water. Majesty. Yeah. I'm using my polarized glasses and I'm standing up on the front of the boat looking for a rock or any kind of structure under the water. beauty you know uh, just getting these right in the corner of the mouth which is where we want them on the top but you can get them you get them a lot of times in the corner um, but just barely hooked man I mean just you get them up in here that thing that hook is just dangling then <laughs> you grab onto it and it pops right out you know so it's it's finesse you know, making sure that you got enough, that your drag is loose on your pole. You don't want your drag too tight and you're just ripping it. You'll rip it right through their skin. Okay. And um, so, but we want tension. All right. And we don't want to be in a rush. So we want our drag nice and loose. We're going to keep upward kind of pressure. Right. And there's always going to be tension. We want always tension because all it's going to take is for to let off a little bit, like when he jumps. Or if I'm not paying attention. Jesus. 
Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. So exalt, lift up on high, name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify, Christ Jesus the in the shadows, you know, just lives underneath a rock. Now we're in the top of the mountain, which is good. That's good. It's been hung up. Not that the other ones are bad. There. Now see? See how dark he is? I mean, he's black. He's been living underneath a rock for a long time. If you will if you kneel will down, down, down and worship, will, me, worship, me, worship me, I will give I it will all, all give it to you. If you are the you Son of God, then jump God, off jump this off highest point, point of the temple. temple. For, the For the scriptures say, he will, he will order his angels to protect, to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so that you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You know, I found that uh, other religions tend to have very fleshy rewards to them. Like when I die, I'll be met by 70 virgins. Now, why do I need to be met in, in heaven by 70 virgins? I mean, is that what heaven is all about? Is having sex? You know, is it, are, we, are we going to be having orgies up there? Is that what it's all about? You know, um, <clears throat> there's also, it can be also fleshy self-righteousness, like uh, my skin color. All skin colors come from my skin color. Why? Because I'm more important than anyone. And God is very concerned about skin colors. My question is, is he concerned about our hair color? You know, I'm sure he is. If he's that concerned about skin color, he must be concerned about what color our hair is. I, I would like to know that. You know, um, we know that Satan is the great deceiver, right? And we remember, do you know why he got kicked out of heaven? It's because he wanted to be like God, right? He wanted to be worshiped. Well, this is like the most prevalent fleshy uh, reward that um, these other religions have is that you become like God. You know, there's, there's one that says that uh, when a martyr, right, somebody who's going out and making a sacrifice or giving up their life for God, when a martyr um, dies, like say in a bomb, say a bomber, somebody who's doing a suicide mission, the first drop of blood that falls from him will save him. See, it's his blood that saves him. There's others that talk about achieving high levels of enlightenment. You know, um, we, we grow. You can grow to higher, higher levels and you become more and more like God. There's others that talk about reincarnation, that we, we're like God again, we never die. We just, we, we reincarnate and go into a, another person or another being until we've achieved full enlightenment and then we become, then we are like God. We become God. Let me read to you what the Bible says in Exodus. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. 
For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children, and the entire family is affected, even children in the third and the fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. Of course, we've heard about other religions that have idols, you know, uh, like uh, Buddha or the Hindu religion from, you know, the, from India and from Asia that have many, many different idols. I mean, all kinds of them. You know, but people will normally, they'll, they'll fall for anything other than Jesus. You know, the Bible talks about how Jesus is the cornerstone of the Bible and of the Christian religion, you know, and that people will trip over the cornerstone. And that's exactly what they do. You know, I've known people that have grown up in a, in a Christian family, and then they made the great decision to stop going to church. Then the years start stacking up and they get further and further away from God. And the next thing you know, they're shopping around. They're looking at the world's religions now and saying, well, you know, I kind of like this over here and I kind of like this, you know, so uh, I'm going to design my own beliefs. And this, this is where these fleshy rewards become attractive, you know. And something else is uh, when we have these religions and they're man-made, they tend to make more sense to us. Okay, uh, why? Because we're men, and they were made by man, so it, was, it makes, sounds more sensible. The Bible tells us that God's ways are higher than our ways. And for an unbeliever, God's word is going to sound like foolishness, is what the Bible says. But when you believe, when you do, and, and all that is, is simply making the choice. I choose to believe this. I asked Jesus to become my Lord and Savior, and I don't know anything about this Bible. I don't know anything about what's going to happen in the future, but you know what? I have to believe in something. I choose to believe the Bible, and uh, you'll start reading that Bible, and you'll understand every single word. It'll be just as plain as day to you. You know, there's a huge trap out there right now, and what it is is chasing after a false god. You know, we're in this instant gratification time period, you know, and uh, we're applying it to religion. And we're, we're out shopping around, trying to find different things that sound good to us. You know, but you, you don't want to be deceived. Um, if you're going to put your time and effort into something, okay, um, why wouldn't it be the Holy Bible, okay? That doesn't mean that we have to join a certain type of religion, okay? But you can study the Holy Bible. You can find yourself a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, non-denominational church that only preaches the Bible. It's not about religion. Lead me every day. Yeah.